Hi guys, it is a nasty, brutal, cold, freezing, yuck, depressing Sunday afternoon here in the end times, and I guess it's paradise here in uh, Garfield, Texas on this gloomy, yuck, Sunday afternoon, February 11th, 2018, so uh, I need to bring you my weekly doomsday sermon and since I have not been able to pick up a book in the past couple of weeks to actually read a real Bible of the apocalypse I do appreciate the Alert Tribes member who I can't remember because so many of you are sending me so many things but I do appreciate whoever the Alert Tribes member was who sent me this article from the good old Guardian the good old guardian doing my work for me. Uh, now I know Andy from over there in Zombie Island likes to pick on the guardian uh, for being a little bit too uh, limp dick, mainstream, uh, hopium filled environmentalist, but compared to anybody else Andy, everything is relative. So but anyway, we're going to hear from my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, Clive Hamilton. Uh, I have actually had, I know I've had at least one Doomsday sermon, and maybe two, but I haven't, we haven't checked in with Clive this week. So what we're going to do, or what the uh, Guardian has done for us, is they have excerpted uh, an essay from his book that I really need to read, Defiant Earth, The Fate of Humans in the Anthropocene. I've heard it pronounced Anthropocene and the Anthropocene. I just call it the Moranocene. Uh, so I would call it Defiant Earth, The Fate of Clueless Fucking Morons in the Moranocene. And so uh, this essay from that book is titled, The Great Climate Silence. We are on the edge of the abyss, but we ignore it. And that's the only time I'm going to hit the No Shit Sherlock button because this entire essay right here in The Guardian from Clive Hamilton. He is a professor down there in Australia, probably sweating like a pig today. Okay, take it away, Clive, who's going to explain to us how we continue to plan for the future as if climate scientists don't exist. And the greatest shame is the absence of a sense of tragedy. Uh, so anyway, guys, as I do whenever I can in a situation like this, I am going to put the link to this essay, this No Shit Sherlock essay, spelling out for anybody on the planet interested in the fact that we are so fucked. I'm going to put the link on here. I'm going to encourage you right now to shut me up. But if you want to sit around and listen to some half-frozen old doomsday prophet hayseed from Texas sit here and read this for you, I will be happy to do that. And uh, with no further ado, from The Guardian, take it away, Clive Hamilton, asking the question, how can we understand the miserable failure of contemporary thinking to come to grips with what now confronts us? <clears throat> Answer. After 200,000 years of modern humans on a four and a half billion year old earth, we have arrived at a new point in history, the Anthropocene, or the Moranocene. The change has come upon us with disorienting speed. It is the kind of shift 
that typically takes two or three or four generations to sink in. Our best scientists <clears throat> tell us insistently that a calamity is unfolding that the life support systems of planet Earth are being damaged in ways that threaten our survival. Yet, in the face of these facts, we carry on as usual. Most citizens ignore or downplay the warnings. Many of our intellectuals indulge in wishful thinking and some influential voices declare that nothing at all is happening, that the scientists are deceiving us. Yet, the evidence tells us that so powerful have humans become that we have entered this new and dangerous geological epoch, which is defined by the fact that the human imprint on the global environment has now become so large and active that it rivals some of the great forces of nature in its impact on the functioning of the Earth system. This bizarre situation, otherwise known as the Twilight Zone episode of living in the 21st century, this bizarre situation in which we have become potent enough to change the course of the Earth, yet seem unable to regulate ourselves, contradicts every modern belief about the kind of creature the human being is. So, for some, it is absurd, this would be the, the Alex Jones crowd, so for some, it is absurd to suggest that humankind could break out of the boundaries of history and inscribe itself as a geological force in deep time. Humans are too puny to change the climate, they insist, so it is outlandish to suggest that we, we puny humans, could change the geological time scale. Others assign the Earth and its evolution to the divine realm. Yes, so that it is not merely impertinence to suggest that humans can overrule the Almighty, but blasphemy. <clears throat> Many intellectuals in the social sciences and humanities do not concede that earth scientists have anything to say that could impinge on their understanding of the world because the world to them uh, consists only of humans engaging with other humans with nature no more than a passive backdrop to draw on as we please. This humans only orientation of the social sciences and humanities is reinforced by our total absorption in representations of reality derived from the media encouraging us to view the ecological crisis as a spectacle that takes place outside the bubble of our existence. And, and this is this reference sometimes used when I use it, uh, an ironic reference, but some people are perfectly serious, talking about watching the movie that what is happening in this, uh, on this planet in 2018 on all levels of the Doomsday Prophecy Pool it is a movie. It, it is a, a Twilight Zone episode that we just are pop the, you know, throw the popcorn in the microwave, sit back and watch the movie uh, rolling out that it is outside of our existence that we are just spectators. We are not act 
actors in the play. We are just spectators sitting here eating our popcorn, watching uh, some doomsday prophet talk about the end of the world uh, on that funny little YouTube channel called Humpty Dumpty Tribe with that comedian, Hambone Little Tail. That movie, that Twilight Zone episode, it has nothing to do with us. Anyway, back to Clive's sermon. It is true that grasping the scale of what is happening requires not only breaking the bubble, but also making the cognitive leap to earth system thinking. That is, conceiving of the earth as a single complex dynamic system. It is one thing to accept that human influence has spread across the landscape, the oceans, and the atmosphere, but quite another to make the jump to understanding that human activities are now disrupting the functioning of the earth as a complex dynamic, ever-evolving totality comprised of myriad interlocking processes. But consider this astounding fact. With knowledge of the cycles that govern earth's rotation, including its tilt and wobble, paleoclimatologists are able to predict with reasonable certainty that the next ice age is due in 50,000 years time. Yet, because carbon dioxide persists in the atmosphere for millennia, global warming from human activity in the 20th and 21st centuries is expected to suppress the next ice age and quite possibly the following one expected in 130,000 years. If human activity occurring over just a century or two can irreversibly transform the climate for tens of thousands of years, we are prompted to rethink history and social analysis as a purely intra-human affair. How should we understand the disquieting fact that a mass of scientific evidence about the Moranocene, an unfolding event of colossal proportions, has been insufficient to induce a reasoned and fitting response to it. For many, the accumulation of facts about ecolog ecological disruption seems to have a narcotizing effect, all too apparent in popular attitudes to the crisis of the Earth system, and especially among opinion makers and political leaders. A few have opened themselves to the full meaning of the Moranocene, crossing a threshold by a way of gradual but ever more disturbing process of evidence assimilation, otherwise known as reading the fucking news, or in some cases after a realization that breaks over them suddenly and with great force in response to an event or a piece of information in itself quite small. And as Terence McKenna and I would recommend, five grams of dried psilocybin mushrooms is a great way to pull your, at, your to wrench your clueless fucking moron head out of your clueless fucking moron ass uh, and see the fucking light. Uh, DMT, mushrooms, 
San Pedro cactus, otherwise known as peyote, uh, ayahuasca, which is another way of saying DMT. These are all great ways to, uh, to understand how we are so fucked. But if you don't want to do that, simply follow, if you don't want to follow Terrence McKenna's advice, follow Al Gore's advice and simply go on to Yahoo News every day and look at uh, the main headlines and especially the science headlines in the mainstream media every day. What does he call it? The disturbing process of evidence assimilation, which is what I have been doing for uh, how many years now? Uh, anyway, bringing you the evidence of how we are so fucked. Okay, getting back to Clive. Beyond the science, the few of us eco-Nazis, the few alert to the plight of the earth sense that something unfathomably great is taking place. Yes, yeah, called the single biggest event in human history is what he's referring to. Conscious that we face a struggle between ruin and the possibility of some kind of salvation. This is the only point in this rant where I have to get the, uh, the bullshit detect the button out on your Clive. Uh, yes, a struggle between ruin and the possibility of some kind of salvation. Clive, I hate to tell you this, there is no possibility of any kind of salvation. We are beyond salvation. Anyway, now that I've straightened uh, Clive out on that. So, today the greatest tragedy is the absence of a sense of the tragedy. The indifference of most to the earth system's disturbance may be attributed to a failure of reason or psychological weaknesses but these seem inadequate to explain why we find ourselves on the edge of the abyss. And guys, I just have to go get something to drink because my throat is on the edge of the abyss here. Let me get some of this planet-saving uh, ocean spray cranberry juice. Uh, I don't know what it is, guys. I was just talking to Vegematic about this. That I almost never cough. I almost never cough. And then every time I turn on the fucking camera and sit down, I start sounding like fucking Hillary Pneumonia Clinton at a goddamn campaign rally. Anyway, thank you Costco and Ocean Spray for saving this uh, sermon. Where were we? Uh, oh yes, we were on the edge of the abyss. Getting back to the abyss. <clears throat> How can we understand the miserable failure of contemporary thinking to come to grips with what now confronts us. A few years after the second atomic bomb was dropped, Kazuo Ishiguro wrote a novel about the people of Nagasaki, a novel in which the bomb is never mentioned, yet whose shadow falls over everyone. The Murano scene's shadow too falls over all of us. Yet, the bookstores are regularly replenished 
with tomes about world futures from our leading intellectuals of the left and the right. Thank you, Clive, for lumping uh, the left in with this. Uh, you know, the left acts like they get a fucking pass for this. The, uh, the left are, are just a little bit more hopium uh, inspired uh, than the right. Anyway, uh, these uh, tomes about world futures from our leading intellectuals of left and right in which the ecological crisis is barely mentioned. They write about the rise of China, clashing civilizations, and machines that take over the world, composed and put forward as if climate scientists do not exist. They prognosticate about a future from which the dominant facts have been expunged. Futurologists trapped in an obsolete past. It is the great silence. The great silence when talking about any, uh, any book whether nonfiction or fiction, and there's no difference anymore looking at the future, that does not take into consideration climate change and, and all the rest, I would add to this, is not just climate change. Uh, it is a fucking joke. The great silence. <clears throat> I heard of a dinner party during which one of Europe's most eminent psychoanalysts held forth ardently on every topic, but fell mute when climate change was raised. He had nothing to say about that. For most of the intelligentsia, it is, a, it is as if the projections of Earth scientists are so preposterous they can safely be ignored. <clears throat> Perhaps the intellectual surrender is so complete because the forces we hoped would make the world a more civilized place, you know, personal freedoms, democracy, material advance, technological power, are, in truth, paving the way to its destruction. The powers we most trusted have betrayed us. That which we believed would save us now threatens to devour us. For some, the tension is resolved by rejecting the evidence which is to say by discarding the Enlightenment. For others, the response is to denigrate calls to heed the danger as a loss of faith in humanity, as if anguish for the earth were a romantic illusion or superstitious regression. Can you say Don Quixote? You know, back Cervantes, back 500 years uh, talking about this, how Don Quixote's sidekick, Sancho Panza, and all of the rest thinking that Don Quixote uh, was a clueless fucking moron, that he was a fool for 500 years ago pointing out where this planet was heading. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Uh, Brother Clive. Yet, the Earth scientists continue to haunt us, following us around like wailing apparitions, while we hurry on with our lives, turning around occasionally with irritation to hold up the crucifix of progress. 
Amen, Brother Clive. This is an edited extract from Clive Hamilton's Defiant Earth, The Fate of Humans in the Anthropocene, uh, published by Allen in Unwin. I like that, Unwin, U-N-W-I-N. Isn't that the great name for a publisher of a book called The Fate of Humans in the Anthropocene, published by Unwin. <laughs> oh, God, maybe I can figure out if anybody has any contact information for Clive Hamilton. I would absolutely love uh, to, uh, to interview Clive for my Voices of the Doomosphere. But anyway, I'm going to, your old Doomsday Preacher is going to wrap up this week's edition of my Doomsday Sermon because I need to run to the nice warm public library uh, where I need to rip a bunch of CDs to put on my iTunes. So I'm going to go spend this nasty day uh, with the homeless people seeking uh, shelter in the Austin Public Library, making music, making my soundtrack for the end times. Uh, I will try to tonight get together my uh, view from Zombie Island, and tomorrow, of course, we will have my economic meltdown roundup rant. For this sermon, Amen, Brother Clive Hamilton. Bye, guys.